Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be trying to visualize the reality of the asteroid belt. We're going to actually try to imagine how many asteroids really are there in the asteroid belt, because I don't think there's really any simulation out there, except for maybe Scott Manley's one that has been doing a good job at showing you how much stuff there is there. We're also going to talk about some near-Earth asteroids and why they're important to us, and just generally have fun using asteroids. Welcome to What The Math. So most simulations in Universe Sandbox and really in pretty much any game I've played um, never really shows you the reality of Asteroid Belt. They either show you asteroids that are way, way too close together, which would be impossible because they would just fall apart, or that show you something that looks kind of like what you see here. There's just maybe a few, uh, some rocks flying around, and there's uh, Ceres and Vesta in there, which are the biggest ones in the Asteroid Belt. And uh, then that's pretty much it. Now, one of the first uh, videos Scott Medley made was actually him showing the uh, real asteroids that were discovered over the past few years. And back then, I think it was just a few hundred thousand that we were able to confirm. Um, but uh, as of 2017, there is over a million asteroids that we've discovered. And uh, we estimate that there's about 1.1 to 1.7 million relatively large rocks in this region right here. Uh, in between Mars and Jupiter. Many of these asteroids have been there for a very, very long time. Many of them have collided with each other. Some of them even became moons of each other. But what we are going to be doing is we're going to just visualize how many this actually is. Um, I'm also going to kind of show you some more important ones in a few seconds of the so-called near-Earth asteroids. So let's start by basically creating this amount. We're going to create 1.1 million asteroids and you'll get to see what it kind of looks like. So first, let's actually uh, look at the orbits here. So the orbits of the inner asteroid belt start at approximately 2.3 astronomical units and they end at around... 3 point something, we'll just say 3.2 astronomical units, so they don't quite reach Jupiter. Now, Mars, as you may know already, has um, two interesting moons orbiting around it, and these are called Phobos and Deimos, and we're today almost certain that both of these were actually captured from the asteroid belt. Both of these were asteroids a long time ago. And we also think that Mars may have actually been created in the asteroid belt. There's a video I made about this previously where I talked about some evidence that suggests maybe Mars was actually made in that region and then migrated later on. And on top of that, a vast majority of Jupiter's moons, including some of the recently discovered ones, and there's like a total of 69 moons that we know of uh, now, all of these moons that have strange orbits, they also were asteroids that were captured by Jupiter over the years. And so there's quite a lot of asteroids out there and there's quite a lot of them that have become moons of other planets. But that doesn't actually show you anything yet. It doesn't show you how many asteroids there really are in the asteroid belt, at least visually. So let's let's make this happen. We're going to go in here, add a ring, starting at about 2.3 astronomical units and then up to about maybe, let's just say, 3. Uh, three, well, let's just say 3.4 actually, and this will be a ring, uh, actually not a ring, this will be a torus because this is a more realistic representation of what these asteroids um, have in terms of shape, and we're going to randomly fill this with different bodies, but here the number is going to be uh, about 1.1 million, and to make this not crash my computer, I actually have to slow down the simulation dramatically, I have to make it real-time and possibly even stop it completely. So here we go, it's going to be 1.1 million parts around the sun. And here we go. It's I made it blue in color just so it's a little bit easier to see and I have to totally actually pause the game because it is ridiculously slow now. So there is your realistic asteroid belt. 
there is about a million rocks out there just kind of casually flying across the solar system, in this case, the um, inner solar system. And this is what we have orbiting around our planet. Um, interestingly, they are actually still quite far away from one another. You would not be able to see an asteroid from another asteroid. Okay, you would be able to see Ceres and Vesta because they're pretty large, but um, a tiny rock only a few kilometers across is not going to be very well visible from another rock that's like hundreds of kilometers away from it. So in that sense, uh, you would easily be able to fly through this asteroid belt without colliding to anything as we have done many, many times. So a common misconception is that you can't really fly through asteroid belt or, you know, in science fiction movies like Star Wars, they often use the asteroid belt for like hiding or uh, getting away from uh, someone who's pursuing them in a spaceship. That would not really happen because these are really far away and you would not really be able to uh, either hide in them or collide in them if you fly through them. So many of the different probes we've sent, starting with Pioneer and Voyager probes up to about the recent ones like Juno, they were able to fly through this just fine, no collisions. And they were even able to take pictures, but from far, far away, because even at this distance, as you're flying through asteroid belt, the closest asteroid to you will be really, really far. So that's what the real asteroid belt looks like. And don't forget, that's just the asteroid belt. We still have more of these things in the Kuiper's belt, a lot more of them. And there's even more things uh, such as comets and asteroid-like objects on the outskirts of our solar system in the Oort cloud, about which I've talked about previously. So this is just a tiny tip of the iceberg when it comes to rocks in space. But before we actually finish this video, let's also briefly talk about this new simulation that is in the game that's known as potentially hazardous asteroids. This is a, a new simulation that was added to Alpha Point 2. And it kind of looks like this. It looks like a very, very big mass with lots of rocks flying around Earth. And so each of the named rocks you see here is actually uh, an asteroid that um, may have at some point caused a little bit of a headache for NASA and for other scientists watching the skies trying to prevent collisions with asteroids. Many of these had at least some risk of colliding with Earth, but when I, when I say risk, I'm talking about like 1% collision chance. Still pretty low. Uh, so some of them are actually named, like this one here made the headlines for, for weeks. It's Tutaris was actually, um, was thought to to have a very high chance of colliding with Earth, but it was actually very, very low. And um, these are so-called near-Earth asteroids. And although for most people, these are seen as uh, scary or dangerous or potentially uh, deadly even, reality is far from the truth. First of all, the chance of them colliding with Earth is very low. Second of all, even if they collide with Earth, the damage will not be as substantial as you may think. And because these asteroids are relatively small, like for example, Apophis is only about 162 meters and 2014 RC is only about 10 meters, um, they really are probably not going to cause much destruction. But they re there is actually an important reason to study them and there's actually a very, very interesting incentive to study them even further and to maybe shift our view of these asteroids from being dangerous and scary to actually being beneficial. There's actually at least um, one uh, organization out there known as Planetary Resources that is trying to study these for future economic purposes. So there's three types of asteroids that they're interested in, and all of them are near-Earth asteroids. Some of them have an orbit that goes from um, Earth past the asteroid belt, and then comes back to Earth. So this is the so-called Amor asteroids. There's another type, uh, I'm actually, maybe I'll help you visualize this by finding one of these. So here, for example, the orange that you see is the so-called Amor asteroid. It goes way, way past the asteroid belt. Uh, another type would be known as a pole asteroid. It um, doesn't come as far. It actually only comes to about the middle of asteroid belt. So this yellow one right here would be an Amor asteroid. And the third type would actually stay in the orbit of our planet. And these are called Aten asteroids. All three of them 
are very interesting in the sense that they would actually allow us to one day mine them. Mining asteroids is still kind of maybe science fiction-y, but there is already enough interest in trying to discover uh, various technologies and also various uh, potential asteroids that have quite a lot of materials on them that would make this a profitable opportunity for someone in the future. So instead of being afraid of these asteroids, we instead can actually now focus on potentially landing on them when they come close to Earth, mining stuff from them, and then returning back to Earth. And this is actually something that can, poten can potentially be done within the next uh, 10 or so years, because we already have the technology needed for it, we just need enough interest um, and enough support from various organizations to make it happen. So like, for example, next time uh, Tantalus comes within our planet Earth, because it's 13.4 kilometers, which is relatively large, we can maybe try to land on the surface of this asteroid, mine all of the potential um, economic benefits. So like things like gold might be there, things like plutonium and uranium, and of course, things like um, precious metals or rare materials that might be very expensive on the Earth, and then return them to Earth at the profit and there's actually a website known as Asterank that about which I've talked about in one of the previous videos that even ranks asteroids in terms of economic profitability and potential profits if you ever decide to mine them. So this is why I personally think that these are amazing amazing discoveries that will transform the economy in the future in the same way that you know things like bitcoins for example transform the economy right now. Anyway. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I wanted to briefly mention these important discoveries and why asteroids are actually kind of important, a lot more important than we think. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and if you have any extra dollars to spend, uh, consider supporting this channel, Patreon. Let's finish this video by exploring our sun. And whoa, look at that. Everything turned blue. That was kind of beautiful. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Bye-bye.